the time has come to make a new watercolor palette. For the longest time, I've been using two separate palettes to hold all of my colors, and I thought it was about time to amalgamate and have one palette to have all my colors in it. The hardest part is figuring out a design and a way to fit all of my colors into this palette efficiently. I ended up swatching out a lot of my paint colors while I thought about how many wells I needed, and this had to be the most frustrating part. I did so many of these little swatches just to get a feel for which colors I would be keeping, which colors I would be removing. I was probably overthinking it, but this is what I, I ended up with. All of these choices, and this one is the one that spoke to me the best. And maybe this one, but yeah, we'll go on from there. Now, if you watched my last palette video, my skull palette video, I had mentioned that finding Sculpey clay had become near impossible since the COVID pandemic. So when I saw this eight pound box stocked on the shelves of my local Michaels, I had to get it because who knows if they would still be around, if there was gonna be any other issues. So I scooped it up. And good thing I did because there was an issue. The Michaels that I go to had a fire. So if I had gone any later to get this or held off any longer, I would not have gotten my clay. So I'm so glad I have it. For those of you who have never worked with polymer clay, it can be a little bit hard to get going. You have to really work it with your hands and get it warmed up. After you get it going, it's a little easier to work with. There's probably a better way to do this, but I don't know of it because I don't actually work with polymer clay a whole heck of a lot. After I'm done kneading it, I put it on a piece of parchment paper. I really like working on parchment paper. It's easy to move around and I can lift and maneuver my work from one place to another very easily. I also use a rolling pin. I don't use this for anything else other than polymer clay. I do see people using uh, different tools to flatten their clay, like a spaghetti maker. Is that what it's called? Pasta machine, something like that. They put it through, they hand crank it through, and it flattens it to a specific flatness. I just roll it out. I don't have a pasta maker that I'm willing to put clay through just yet. Now, here is where I start doing a little bit of measuring. I'm using a watercolor pan to be kind of my template for my wells for my palette. I used this same pan for my original palette and I really liked the size of it. It gave me a lot of space for watering down my paints. It also gave me a lot of space for different sized brushes to use. So I wanted to keep with, with the same size. So compared to my original palette, I haven't gained much space. They are about the same size, and I was hoping for more mixing space. I have 15 wells here, 5, 10, 15, yep. And I have 5, 10, 13 wells on this one. But again, I would really like to have more mixing room. I'm not sure if I should expand this top row and make it horizontal, or maybe i should expand it downward and make it a little longer that way the problem is i don't want it to be too big in comparison to my workspace i could move my pans this way but that might make it ridiculously huge so i think i'm gonna tinker with it and i will go from there
So my intuition was right and it's too big. It's too long. I, it bothers me. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove a row and I'm going to put it at the bottom. Now there's probably other places I could have cut, but I chose this place. There is a method to my madness. That's a lie. I really don't know what I'm doing, but we're going to do it anyways. We're going to make this work. And already this, this makes me feel better. I would just like to say that no matter how much you plan or you think you've planned, nothing ruins a plan quite like actually trying to execute the plan. Because I thought I had a clear idea of what I wanted coming into this project, but it kept evolving and changing on me, which is fine. That's all good and dandy. A lot of my work does that to me. But, uh... For once, I would just like to have a clear idea and be able to execute that idea without it kind of going sideways on me. And if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just laying down where my wells are going to be going. And I'm also kind of pushing down the clay to sort of adhere it to my base that I've made. You can see, especially here, how I'm just squishing it down and making sure it's nice and attached to the base. It's a very satisfying process, but it's also very time consuming, much like this entire project. Now we're gonna fast forward a bit here. This is a barely completed flattened down side. And over here is a very not completed flattened down side. And it's about now where I'm realizing exactly what I've gotten myself into because this is the most time consuming part. This side is much more done, even though it still has a long ways to go. I gotta do a lot of smushing still. I'll do some over here and show you. Very satisfying, I love it. I've also been using my clay tool a bit more Sometimes it does not take a lot of pressure to be able to move the clay, even with the tool. Once it gets all nice and warmed up, it's incredibly easy to move and work around. Again, there are probably better ways to do this, but I just don't know what they are. I feel like the time lapse is a very good indicator of how time consuming this is because I spent what felt like an eternity doing this, and by the end of it, it didn't look like I got very far. Like, do they look better? Absolutely. But it was absolutely tedious. So, after I got that one side all nice and pretty looking, I realized that my wells were not deep enough. In my original palette, I had made nice deep wells where I could mix lots of pigment and not have to keep mixing more. So uh, all of that nice work I had completed, I basically had to do all over again. So while I'm fixing all of that work I'd done, I'm going to tell you what these little tiny wells are for. I didn't have them in my original drawings, but I did intend to have them the whole time. My plan is to put white paint in those to create pastel versions of all the colors I intend on using. Originally, I had wanted to actually make two tiny wells, one for a granulating version and one for the white, but I did not have enough room to have both. So here we are, this side is all nice and neat and super close to being done. And then the whole rest of the palette, which is nowhere near being done. So if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm not primarily a sculpty sculpture kind of a person. I don't just work with polymer clay. I actually work with watercolors. And if you haven't checked out my other work, I highly suggest you do specifically go check out my Pareidolia playlist. 
I do a lot of pareidolia art and I enjoy making monsters and fantasy landscapes so please go check out my other work. I would also appreciate a like, a share, a comment, a subscribe, any of those things. They're all free and they do help me hopefully turn this into a full-time gig so please go do that. And just like that, we're on to the final stage. All I have to do now is to smooth out all these little lumpy bits and it'll be ready to rock and roll. Here, let's focus here. Yeah, all that, that needs to be smoothed out. I might have to do one more roll and maybe a little bit more cutting in the corners, but yeah, this is, this is fairly ready. A little time skip here and everything is smoothed out. You can see it's all cleaned up. I could probably put it into the oven right now, but I'm thinking of adding kind of mixing zones by putting in these little bits here. That shouldn't take too long. I'll pop them in. We'll smooth them. There we go. This is ready for firing. And this is fresh out of the oven. Baking it went fairly well. I had a couple of bubbles form underneath where you can actually see where it's bubbled up a little. Um, I can't get rid of that. I would have to probably sand that down. We're going to move on and we're going to start the glazing process. I use the Sculpey brand glaze. I try to put on three coats. My original palette only had two coats and I found it lifted up with a couple of the colors, specifically the granulating colors. So palettes I've made since my original, I've done three and it has worked out very well. One thing I would like to mention is to make sure the paintbrush you use for this part is 100% clean because mine wasn't. There was a little bit of pigment residue left in from using it with my watercolors and it gave kind of like a little dirty scummy look to a couple of the wells in the corners. And here is the final product. It has all three glazes on. You can see the little scummy bits I was talking about. But all of that should be hidden once I get the paint into it. Now, I'm not going to put the paint into it this video. This video has already gone on long enough, so stay tuned to a part two where I finally put paint in it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Bye!